This is the AIM-120 AMRAM, or Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. Developed in 1987 by Hughes Aircraft Company and Raytheon, it was designed to replace the semi-active radar AIM-7 Sparrow, and it is in service with the United States, Chile, Japan, and many more. Japan made their own beefy version called the AAM-4. I call those jam rams. Get it? Japanese am rams? Alright. Welcome to Scenario Fulfillment. I'm Dasher, and today we're going to be taking a look at the AIM-120 AMRAM. And stick around for the basic operations of the weapon as well. So let's get into it, and thank you for watching. There are four variants with multiple subvariants: the AIM-120 Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta, or A, B, C, and D. And subvariants meaning it was modified slightly, not to justify changing the alternation letter, like the AIM-120C-5. So example, oh look, we changed the color of the AIM-120X. Okay, we'll call it AIM-120X-2. Many aircraft carry this missile, but the Charlie was designed in mind for the F-22 Raptor. The C is different because it has its aero surfaces clipped in order to be stowed in the F-22's internal weapons bay. These surfaces are not interchangeable with the AIM-120A or B, but the Alpha doesn't matter because it's out of service. Pushing this missile is a WPU-6B boost sustained solid propellant rocket motor. The true speed is classified, but it can reach supersonic, giving it a range greater than 20 miles. The missile knows where it's going because it receives information from the launching aircraft's radar, but the big thing about this missile is that it has its own radar, and that lets it guide onto a target by itself. But it can receive target updates from the launching aircraft. The thing that would make the target go boom is its 40 pound blast fragmentation warhead and can either directly impact the target or detonate within proximity. The Delta is the newest kit on the block with increased range, GPS antennas, and other various improvements. Why does it need GPS antennas? Well, it improves the navigational accuracy of the missile. These missiles are great because they allow for the launching aircraft to engage multiple targets simultaneously in the aircraft's radar's track while scan mode, or TWS. It allows for the aircraft's radar to track a target with a good bit of information for the missile to work with while scanning for others. Once the pilot launches the missile at their primary target, they can switch to a secondary target in TWS mode and launch another missile at the secondary. Not only that, he can lock up another target in TWS and fire a third missile at it. The three missiles should then receive updates via data link from the aircraft's radar flying towards their own targets. So let's just say if the F-15EX can carry 12 AM-120 AMRAMs and it has 12 targets it can engage, it could engage each target simultaneously in track while scanned. Another advantage with track while scan in the AIM-120 is since it's using data link to guide towards their target, the target won't even be alerted by their radar warning system until the last few seconds due to the missile's radar being off mid-flight. But given the right conditions in the pilot's eyesight, they could possibly still see the smoke from the launch. A bit of history. Two Yugoslavian MiG-29s piloted by, forgive me if I butcher their names, Slobodan Peric and Major Zoran. Radil Seljevic were shot down by an F-15C Eagle with AIM-120 AMRAMs launched by U.S. Air Force Captain Jeff Hong in Operation Allied Force. And this was done in track while scanned. This makes him the first pilot to engage two air targets with missiles simultaneously and shoot them both down. Yes, his wingman was there, but it was determined that his missiles missed. Now the AIM-120 doesn't need the aircraft's radar to lock onto a target before launch. It can be launched in its visual mode and will lock onto the first thing it sees. And this would be called a mad dog launch. Something amazing about the AIM-120D is it has the capability to launch and leave, also known as cooperative engagement capability. For example, a U.S. Air Force F-15 and a U.S. Navy E-2D AWACS works together to take down an aircraft. The U.S. Air Force F-15 fires an AIM-120 at their target from beyond visual range. 
and turns around to home. While from a very safe distance, the E2D can guide that missile in via data link to the target. That's insane. Now, it should be noted that these missiles don't care about what they lock onto. Because of its active radar, extreme caution is necessary to avoid friendly fire. Just like the Harpoon missile, the AMRAM has the capability to home on a jamming source. So if the target is sporting a jammer like the L203 wing pods, the missile can home on the jamming source passively until its radar can basically ignore the jammer and home on the target actively. All right, let's take a look at the basic operations of the missile. Two F-16s are in a combat air patrol mission when an AWACS informs them of a threat taking off from an enemy airbase. The AWACS orders the two F-16s to intercept. Both F-16s and the threat aircraft are flying towards each other 50 miles apart. The flight leader proceeds to track him and track while scanned. In this mode, he can receive adequate information while scanning for other aircraft, and it won't alert the target aircraft, so think of it as a soft lock-on. The AWAX clears the fighters to engage. The flight leader launches his AIM-120 at a feasible range. The missile isn't active yet. It has to go through a timer before it activates but it's still receiving updates from the launching aircraft about the target via data link. Once the timer's up, the missile activates and should alert the enemy aircraft. Thank you for watching. Help the channel grow by liking, subscribing, and commenting on what you want to see next. I will see you in the next one. Stay safe.